Hello, I'm Andy Sheathen. Well, welcome once again to one of our Rainfall Pod videos on techniques of the Orange Belt Syllabus. And in this one, we'll be looking at the technique crossing talons. Crossing talons is a wrist grab technique, and we will be discussing how the technique actually gets its name through the use of Kempo terminology. We'll be breaking it down as usual, looking at some do's and don'ts as I see it when I teach my students. We'll also be looking at about eight variations in this video. Um, four of the variations we're terming, we term as uh, step up variations, where we use a different technique to answer a different type of situation, but without changing that technique's components very much. But then also, we'll, at the end, we'll be looking at our usual variations when we explore different options. Uh, so let's get into this technique now. We'll have a look at it from three different perspectives as usual, unobstructed, so you can see all the moves, and then get into the breakdown. So, let's get on with crossing talents. Kempo terminology references birds of prey in some but not all techniques that involve grabs, such as desperate falcons, grasping eagles, or falcons of force. The feet of a bird of prey are known as talons. A falconer will wear a thick leather gauntlet to allow his falcon to use his arm as a perch. The bird grips the falconer's gauntlet at the wrist and hand with its talons. Our opponent attacks by grasping our wrist like a bird of prey grasping with its talon. This attack crosses the center line between you and your opponent. Hence, this technique receives its name, crossing talon. The most common method of execution I see for crossing talon is by the defender proffering his wrist forward towards his opponent. The opponent then proceeds to accept the invitation by grasping the top of the defender's wrist. The defender then proceeds to circle his arm until at the apex of this circle he countergrabs his opponent's wrist. This is then followed by the technique standard execution. However, the circling of the arm in an attempt to countergrab may signal your intentions to your opponent. No matter how fast you attempt to countergrab, your opponent is far more likely to be faster and may even initiate a counterattack himself. If you do find yourself in this position, ensure you trap the attacking hand first. This will also enable the application of a Nikio type wrist lock if you so desire. Another problem I see is the actual reaching out and waiting to be attacked. This in itself is an incorrect mindset. Don't give your opponent attack options out of habit. Rather get into the habit of making your opponent do the work. Here, if my opponent wants to grab me, I make him come to me. My natural arm positioning makes his grab go to the underside or inner wrist and not to the outside or top of the wrist. I also do not immediately counter grab. I wait until I dominate the situation. This is because I do not want to tip off my opponent. It is actually ergonomically difficult to do until I am nominating, and I do not need to, as if he really means to grab, he will not immediately let go. I also have the advantage of causing my opponent to lose his posture whilst maintaining my own. This makes dominating that much easier. Although I have stated not to proffer the arm, we do actually do this regularly when we're shaking hands with someone. Should our opponent decide to attack as we go to shake hands, we end up in a crossed wrist grab position to the inner or underside of the wrist. This demonstrates that although we have only one dedicated cross wrist grab technique in our syllabus, we can easily convert gift of destruction, gift in return, gift of destiny, and broken gift to crossing talent variations. If we do convert a handshake to a crossing talon type defense, 
Ensure you pull your arm back, anchoring the elbow prior to executing the defense and thereby taking your opponent out of posture. Because we want our posture to be good and our opponents to be bad, don't lose your posture by trying to keep the inward block against your opponent's arm if he drops low, as your posture will be lost if you follow him down. Simply employ sequential flow and extend your arm, allowing your heel palm to take over. On this initial move, you may find your opponent's head involuntarily impacting your lead knee. We now execute the next series of strikes with one arm. You may wish to insert a push drag towards your opponent prior to the first strike, using your trunk as a weapon to impact your hip into your opponent's ribs. Immediately follow up by executing an outward elbow to his temple. Follow up with an outward underhand heel palm strike to his jaw. Now claw his face as you rip up, digging your elbow down into his shoulder joint and using this as a fulcrum. Follow on by circling your arm back to deliver an overhead inward downward elbow to your opponent's upper spine as you also employ marriage of gravity. The impact from your elbow strike causes your opponent's head to jerk up and backwards. Immediately take advantage of this to feed a downward vertical heel palm strike to a mastoid bone. Continue applying pressure to the rear of your opponent's head, thereby sandwiching it between your hand and a simultaneously executed knee kick to his face. As you replant your knee kick to its point of origin, pull back on his wrist as you thrust forward with your hips to again use your trunk as a weapon to break or hyperextend his elbow joint. We will now proceed on to the extension to crossing talons. If you do not require this information at your point in training, you may wish to bypass the next section of this video. Move your striking arm to allow both hands to now grasp your opponent's wrist. Have the thumbs of both hands positioned together on the rear of your opponent's hand with your fingers gripping around the underside of his wrist. Both of your hands should fit snugly around their respective sides. As soon as you have secured your hold, step back with your lead leg, twisting your body harmoniously with the step as you apply a lock to your opponent's wrist, ensuring your elbows are anchored as you do so. Your opponent will react to the discomfort of this lock by rising up and leaning slightly backwards out of posture in an attempt to alleviate the pain. Follow up by delivering a roundhouse kick to his face or solar plexus with your lead foot to keep him moving backwards and towards the floor. With your opponent face up on the floor while still maintaining the grip on his wrist with both of your hands, release your rear hand and pass it between yourself and your opponent's arm to grasp his wrist once again, but this time having your thumb down and little finger up. Immediately rotate into a reverse bow as you simultaneously rotate your opponent's arm in the same direction, presenting his elbow to receive a heel palm strike from your free hand. Now track this striking hand up your opponent's arm to join your other hand in gripping his wrist. Now cock your lead leg with its instep against your opponent's arm and immediately track your foot down his arm, executing a side stomp kick to his neck as you simultaneously pull up on his arm to cause a shoulder and upper spinal separation. From here, front crossover and cover out. Hello and welcome back. So now we're going to take a look at our end variations. Now I said at the beginning we've got more than normal and we've got four end variations in this video rather than the usual three. However, the first three variations are using crossing talents as a return point throughout the variation. What I mean by that is we may alter the initial move, but the object of the next three variations is to return to crossing talons in its base format of some sort. Now this first variation uses that concept, but it also brings in ambidexterity. I'm a very big believer in ambidexterity in Kempo, and we should be equal on both sides as we move. So here, our opponent will counterattack, and through that counteract, we're able to use crossing talons, but we'll switch onto the opposite side.
Okay, so now let's get on to our second variation. In this one, our opponent switches from a handshake to a wrist grab, as we sort of discussed earlier on in the video, so you're aware of this situation could occur. But here, he pulls me towards him. Now, I use purposeful compliance in my defense and just go through and activate the base concept of the technique capturing the storm. And then after I've gone through that as aspect of capturing the storm, I again return to crossing talents. Okay, so let's get on to our third variation. Here, my opponent is being belligerent and he's coming towards me in an aggressive manner. My natural instinct is to back away and push him away with my hands to keep him in my safe zone so he's not too close to me. At that point, he takes advantage of the fact that my hands are up and he grabs my wrist, but he doesn't grab my wrist in the normal way for crossing talons. He grabs it with my hand upright. So from here, I just use the concept of flashing mace. And then, once I've done that, once again, return to crossing talons. Okay, so now let's get on to our fourth and final variation. Now, the first three, we've been using the fact of trying to get back to crossing talents as a way of exercising our intuition. Uh, we set ourselves a task, and that task is return to crossing talents, and we have to try and find a way to achieve that. But you don't have to just return to the base technique. You can do something different. And in this technique, I just simply alter my concept of defense and come through with the technique darting mace. Okay, so that's the end of this video on the technique crossing talons. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all the people who have subscribed to our channel. Um, we're growing slowly, um, but if it wasn't for you guys hitting that subscribe button, we wouldn't be as far up the rankings as we are now. But we can still do better. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please think of doing so. Um, and if you know of anybody who might find the information in these videos of use, let them know we're around. You know, share the video, share by word of mouth. Any way you can get us more subscribers will push us up the rankings and hopefully this information can go out to more Kempoists or other martial artists who find Kempo of interest. So on that note, I'll just say one more time, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit that like button and don't forget to share. So again, thank you for joining us and this is Andy Seathen of Kempoist Fusion Martial Arts saying goodbye.